on today's episode of Golden Key Design, we're gonna take this and turn it into this. Stay tuned to see how we did it. So in order to do this project, I'm going to be using the Henry Feather Finish product. This is used for underlayment patching and it's a concrete product. All you need to do is mix it with water to get it ready and then I'm going to be using a six inch trowel to spread it along the wall. Make sure that when you mix up your batches that you mix up the same amount of water and same amount of feather finish every time. Otherwise, you might end up with a slightly different hue of the gray tones on your wall. You might have a bunch of different patches. Also, the working time of this product is around 15 minutes. So I would be careful not to mix up the entire bag, but rather maybe a quarter to a third at the start and make sure that you can work fast enough to use up all that product within that 15 minute window before it starts to dry out. As you can see, I've already taped off my walls. You're gonna to wanna to do that. And if you have carpet or nice flooring underneath, you're probably gonna to wanna to put some sort of plastic down. However, this is just a subfloor, so I don't care if it gets a little bit dirty, but you definitely wanna take out your edges because it's very easy to get messy with this product. So now let's mix it up and get started. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a bowl or a tray to mix things up in and something you don't really care about getting a little bit too dirty. Also, I'm using a mason jar here to measure out the mix as well as my water. It's two parts of the mix to one part water, and the mason jar just helps to make that measuring a little bit easier. And you should just keep a little bit of water on the side and mix it in slowly as you don't want to add too much water, but you can always add a little bit more to make it a little bit thinner of a mixture. I got mine to about a peanut butter consistency and then I started spreading it on the wall. I put mine on pretty thick as I had some residue left by the wallpaper I tore off, but if your wall is perfectly flat, you won't need to spread it on as thick as I did. However, you do definitely want to cover all of the paint, you don't want any of that showing through. Once I had used up all the mix in this batch, I started to come back and spread things out with the trowel to get rid of the high spots. Then I mixed up batch 2 and got back to work. I slowed things down here just so you could see how I actually spread it. There isn't really a technique here and there's no rhyme or reason. You just want to cover the wall as best you can and as you spread it out, you just don't want to push too hard otherwise the paint on the wall will kind of show through as you see there in the middle. So you're just going to have to go over the same spot maybe a couple times to make sure it's a consistent thickness across the wall. Alright, so I just finished this section and just a few notes as I got going here. Um, you just want to make sure that you're covering up all of the wall. It might be a good idea, honestly, to paint your wall a gray color prior to doing this if you have the time, just in case there's any see-through spots, you know, it's not gonna stick out. Um, but you can already see it's starting to dry a bit here. And I put it on relatively thick because of the texture of that wallpaper that was on here previously, so I had to get a little bit of thickness to it. Uh, but overall, it's going pretty well. This bottom section is now starting to dry. And so I'm just coming back and honing it basically um, as it's dry, it's still a little bit wet, but I can drag my trowel across it and get rid of any like large marks that are clearly not artistic, let's say. And I can just drag it across and it'll just smooth everything out nicely. And then I'll probably do that again for that top section once that one is also at that point. But for now, we're just going to keep going. And I might need to go buy another bag, hopefully not, we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to try and make it all the way across and I'm going to leave room for the headboard and just not do that section in order to save a little bit of product in case it do run out. But anyway, let's keep going. All right, so unfortunately I just ran out of the feather finish. I should have bought two boxes. However, you know, mistakes happen. So I'm gonna have to run to Home Depot. Unfortunately, it's about a 20 to 30 minute drive. Uh, but I really just had this little section here to go and I'd be done. I left this because I'm gonna put a headboard there so I don't wanna just waste the product. But even with that, I still ran out. I probably could have made this area a little bit bigger, but I went conservative, but I think it's turning out well. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then come back with my spackle knife and just clean it up a little bit and hone it. And then from there, I'm gonna to go to Home Depot, pick up another box, and then hopefully have this done in just a couple hours. Let's get to it. Definitely looks worse before it gets better. As you can see, the wall is still drying, but the final color there is in the lighter gray on the right-hand side, so definitely gonna turn out nice. However, this is what I have to drive through to get to Home Depot, so that's gonna be fun. So I just got back from Home Depot after buying my second bag of the feather finish and I filled in this corner right here as you can see. 
The rest of the wall has dried a significant amount, uh, but it might be a little hard to tell, but I actually can see a slight variation in the color of the gray depending on which patch or which section I was working on. As you can see, there's kind of a line here as well as just kind of a line here. And so I think it's just because of mixing up multiple batches, there's slightly different water content in each, even if you're trying to be precise. And therefore it just results in a slightly different gradient or color of the gray. So what I'm gonna do is mix up some more of that feather finish, go back and just kind of touch up random areas of the wall to try and just make it a little bit less obvious where those lines are. And I think it'll turn out fine because of the heavy amount of texture with this finish. If you just kind of play around with it and just put it everywhere, no one's really gonna notice, no one's gonna be drawing the right at one specific spot, just kind of like taking it in as a whole. So I'll mix up some more and let's get to it. So as you can see, I'm pretty much just spreading it everywhere and it may look like I'm using a lot. However, I'm coming back and scraping off a lot of the excess and as you can see, it's drying a lot faster. And then you might notice in those lower sections, that was where the wallpaper was and the adhesive kind of made it dry a little funny. So I just put two coats on that and it ended up working out nicely for me. And so now here's where we're at and now we just have to be patient and wait for it to dry. All right, so I just finished laying all of the feather finish. As you can tell, I ended up covering up where the headboard and bed will go just because I ended up buying an extra bag and I thought it just looked a little funny, so I figured why not, let's just fill it in. Um, probably not going to do two coats or worry about how it looks in the end, but at least the whole wall is covered at this point. And as you can see, there's some patches still drying. I went back and did a second, third, and sometimes fourth coat, just doing little areas at a time, just really spreading it pretty aggressively and wiping off a lot of the excess uh, to make it a little bit of a smoother surface as well as to mix up that gray uh, color so it doesn't look like there's just specific patches of your different batches that you made. And I think I did a pretty good job of cut between uh, the old clip of me showing the line that was here, the line that was there. If you look now, I, I can't see it. So um, you're, you're not really gonna be looking for it when you come in the room anyway, it's just kinda there. And I think it, it looks good now. So I think the key is to do a few different coats. You don't need to do the whole wall for a second coat, but just specific areas to kind of even out that color. As the rest is dry, I'm gonna pull off the tape. Hopefully everything is okay. I'm a little bit worried that it might have hardened onto the tape and uh, as I pulled off it might break away. I'm also worried about the paint on the walls and it might pull off with the tape because this is a bit of an older room. The drywall is pretty old. So I'm praying, crossing my fingers and praying that it, that it works okay. Let's get to it. Luckily, the tape came off actually pretty easily. The cement did harden a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. However, if you do have the opportunity, I would just pull this tape off while your cement's still wet and it makes things a lot easier. And unfortunately, I did pull off some of the paint on the ceiling. However, I touched it up and all is well now. All right, so that's a wrap on the concrete accent wall. I think it turned out really nice. We have a few more finishing touches to do. Obviously, we're not done with the room just yet. We still need to add in some light fixtures, some outlet covers, and also build a bed. Uh, those will be in upcoming future videos, but I'll show a few shots here of the finished product with everything all furnished so you can get an idea of what the space will look like in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something along the way. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. This was a really fun project. The skill level wasn't too high as the product is relatively forgiving and you can always put on more patches and more coats if anything gets screwed up, so no worries there. And next week we'll be building the floating bed, so stay tuned and get subscribed for that. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as I'd really appreciate it. And leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next time.